Was there ever a time you wanted to give up filmmaking? Wow. You know what? I have to be, in terms of me wanting to give up filmmaking, I don't think there's ever been a time I wanted to give up. Honestly, I mean, there's always been, there's been hard times. I mean, there's been times where I've, uh, there was one time when I first moved to LA and I literally lived in six different places in seven, no, I lived in eight different places in six months. And there was one time when my friend moved, I moved with him because I was just couch surfing. I would be here and I'd be here. So, and then there was a time I lived out of my car, right? Literally, I was just living out of my car. And so I've had some really hard times, but I've never wanted to give up, never in terms of, and maybe it's because I just went too far down that road and I was like, oh, there's no, nothing else I want to do. But um, the vision of being a director and a filmmaker has always been there, you know, despite, you know, circumstances. Yeah. But I've, but I've had, you know, lived out of my car, lived out of a soundstage. Um, yeah. I've, 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 yeah, I've paid the price. <laughs> and not that everybody has to do that, right? Um, but when you're, you know, when you have a dream and you're committed you know, and that's and it's something that you believe in wholeheartedly, then you'll do whatever it takes. You'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. So you were living out of your car and were you still being creative or at least attempting no, to be creative? No, it was hard. To answer your question, living out of my car and being creative, it was hard. And uh, no, I wasn't, I was still writing, but it was hard. And at some point um, I had to just find a job. And that's when I started to do the sound thing more seriously, you know, just to keep a roof over my head. You know, people don't realize how hard it is to be a filmmaker in L.A. But when you first get here, you don't know anybody. It's tough. And so I had to get out of survival mode. Right. I had to get to a place where now I have money coming in. I'm paying the rent. I'm, I'm eating. I don't have to call home and ask my mother for money for, you know, for rent. I had to. So so being in survival mode is a really hard place to be. And, um, but LA is not a, it's not an easy place to break in. It's just not, you know, you come out here that a lot of people were doing what you want to do. Um, more, some more committed than others. Uh, relationships take precedent a lot of time. But when you first get here, who do you know? Right? You're building your foundation, you're building your network. And so, and that takes time. It takes a lot of time. So my advice is sometimes when people first get out here, I'm like, you know, sometimes before you even get here, if you're wherever you are, you know, Idaho or, you know, or Oakland, California, if you will, you know, to get a body of work, write scripts, have four or five scripts, you know, or two, three, two or three scripts. Don't just come out here with one script, have two or three scripts, then come out here, right? Then that way you, you're you going to be struggling, you're going to be living, but you've got a body of work. Now you can kind of go out and shop that. Uh, but we, But to do that while you're out here, it can be really tough, especially when you're struggling. So once you got this stable job and you got mm -hmm. an apartment or your roommate or whatever, yeah. then did you did it happen gradually or did you feel like, okay, now now that I have something coming in every two weeks or whatever on this paycheck, I can start writing and what do yeah, I want to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, I had I had to get out of the, the out of the place of I would meet people and they would give me hope. Like I would get my script to somebody and somebody like, oh, I can do it, I can do it. But then I had to realize that a lot of people in LA just talk, <laughs> right? And so um, and I would call home, mom, I met such and such, or, or uh, you know, a girlfriend if I had it at the time. Oh, I just got the script. So I just had to get out of that place, right? And so now having done it for a lot of years, now um, I have, ex I, don't, I take the expectation off of it. Like I have hopes that um, everything is gonna happen, but I take the expectation. Like meaning, I'm gonna give this person the script, they're gonna green light it, we're gonna make it, and it's gonna be done. Because that doesn't happen a lot of times, right? And if you always set yourself up for that, like, oh, it's gonna happen, then you're living in a constant state of disappointment. So I think the best thing to do is just sort of give it to somebody and release. Give it to somebody. You have high hopes, but don't be too attached to it or the expectation, right? Because you may set yourself up for disappointment. And, um, and a lot of people I know, a lot of writers I know, go through a lot of depression. You know, I don't want to come out of the house. I don't want to talk to people, and so I'm not. I'm not that kind of person. Um, but yeah, I've just learned to just sort of just release. I mean, put the effort. You know, in, in the case of Howard, when I gave him the script 
and we started to talk about it. I mean, it was a year later. I mean, we developed that thing for a whole year. Oh, wow. Like, so it didn't just happen. Like, I gave it to him, piqued his interest. He liked it, but he wanted to develop it, right? And he developed it, me not even knowing that he was going to make it. I mean, it was never a promise or him saying, oh, yeah, you know, if we get it to this place, I'm going to give you the money or I'm going to finance it. It was just, it was a cordial, it was a great relationship. The, the script was becoming better, so I didn't mind the relationship because he would give us notes and the script would be better. So at the end of that process, whether he was going to make it or not, I was going to have a better script. So I was like, this is a win-win for me. And then, uh, but then at the end of that year, uh, he felt really good about the script and where it was at in terms of place and he said let's go ahead and make it and I think we can make it in uh, you know I think it was at that time it was maybe in August and he said we can make it in November and he had another film he was going to do before mine mm -hmm. and then he pulled the trigger on it yeah I always think it's like a kiss of death when somebody says especially to a young person I want to help you yeah and I don't mean to sound negative yeah. but you really do have to have oh, your yeah. guard up yeah, especially yeah. those those oh, yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've met with, uh, since I've d directed that film, Skin in the Game, I've met with some big TV directors, right? I won't even name their names. and uh, But I don't go in there thinking, oh, they're going to help me. They're going to put me on. You know, that's, that's what some people, that be, young people like that term, being put on. Somebody's going to grab you, going to have some kind of Wizard of Oz or boom, and now you're on. And I just, it doesn't happen like that a lot of times. And then you have to ask, what's it in for that other person? Sure. You know, like I generously give myself to other people now. I want the, I want to help other people, you know, but I know it's because it's just part of who I am. But some people aren't built like that. Some people, you know, I mean, they may give you one word of advice and that's it. Don't ask me for nothing else. Right. And so and some people will go beyond that. But so I, I've just learned to kind of um, just take what people can give me. You know, take and, and to the point about meeting with these directors, I don't expect anything from them. Hey, listen, if the guys can tell me what helped them, what worked for them, sometimes that's good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, I know there was another person that was upset because they felt that the peers around them had, or the people around them that were sort of peers had made it and that person hadn't. Yeah. And they were upset. They said, they won't help me. Yeah. But at some point, I, I have to think that someone can't risk their reputation and just trying mm -hmm. to pull up their mm -hmm. friends too? Well, I've had that happen too. And my conversation around that, especially when it comes down to, uh, well, in general, yeah, it's a tough thing to do because, um, well, let me back up. I'm going to say what I wanted to say. So uh, when it comes down to black filmmakers and when women filmmakers, I admire what Ava's doing. You know, like Ava's hiring women filmmakers to direct for the first time on her show, Queen Sugar, right? And by giving them a shot, and some of these women have done shorts, but most of them have done independent features, but nobody looks at them, right? So then when they take meetings, they're saying at the meetings, uh, TV meetings, that is, I want to direct TV. They're like, well, have you ever done TV? Well, it becomes a catch-22. Well, how am I going to do TV if I've never done it? And how are you going to give me a shot if I've never done it? But yet they've done these feature films, right? But Ava is eliminating all that. She's giving women a shot. To direct qualified women now, women that have proven themselves, you know, and but we can more of us can benefit from that, right? Like more, especially for me, when you're talking about like I don't want to use the word minorities, but when you're talking about like people that don't traditionally have a shot, and that have been kept out of the mainstream, right? So then I think you have to set up not just lip service programs, but work with these people, and if they're qualified, to get them in, sort of creating this new pool of filmmakers, if you will, is that a lot of the filmmakers she's reaching out to have independent films, they've done shorts, so they've done something. So they've qualified themselves on a certain level, right? And now she's giving them access to direct TV, and now so when they go back to producers and television and say, um, and a lot of the directors, by the way, have gone on, Sally Richardson, you know, uh, Cheryl Dunier, have gone on to do television beyond Ava, but she's given them that start. But these filmmakers um, have all paid dues. And I make, I make that a specific point because people don't want to pay dues anymore. They just want to be put on. They want to come out to L.A. and they want somebody to just, like a fairy godmother, to just come in and say, here. Or they want to write one script. Or they want to write two scripts and say, oh, I'm ready. You know, And it just takes more than that. Um, I've paid a lot of dues. Uh, and I think that people should pay dues, you know, and when I say pay dues, it's really about just uh, getting better at your craft, right, or doing 
you know, sometimes you have to be an assistant before you can be a writer, before you can be in the writer's room, right? Or sometimes you have to be, uh, you know, direct shorts before you can direct a feature, right? So it's about paying those kind of dues. Um, in my case, I don't even know if I look at it as dues anymore, as, as more as just a necessary stepping stone to get where you want to be. Like, I've paid dues, but for me now, it's like climbing the mountain. Now I'm here. Okay. And now I got to get to here and I'm grabbing here. And so for me, just because I've done an independent film, I still feel like I'm paying dues. Like I've gone, I, listen, I've come a, a long way and I, I want to applaud my efforts and the people around me that have supported me to do this feature film, right? But to do another film at another budget point is going to require another kind of paying dues. So I haven't made it by any stretch of the imagination, right? And what does making it mean anyway? You know, so, I mean, I mean, I think we all set our own standard for what success is. And so I'd like to think that I'm successful at this level in terms of having done this feature film. Uh, but there's other milestones and other goals that I want to set for myself.